Hey guys, welcome back to the House of Audience. So in today's show, we've got quite a bit to talk about. It's the that time of the month where we discuss the uh, checklist. So we're going to be talking about our December checklist. And there's a lot on that checklist. So that's going to kind of replace the education side of today's show because there's quite a bit to talk about and, and go through with that. Then in terms of the, the balance of the show, I thought we would look at the blues um, in terms of the mutation side of it. Uh, we've got quite a few blues this year that we're going to be pairing up and that's thanks to a very generous donation from one of our club members that is emigrating. So a big shout out to, to Herod. Thank you for those birds. Um, and I'll be showing you those birds as we go through, the, through that part of the episode. And then the majestic side, we're going to be pairing up um, a little bit earlier than the rest of the birds, uh, one of the pairs. And the reason being is that the hen and the cock bird were through the malt earlier than, than some of the others. And the hen's beak has gone completely black. Now, I don't normally like to do that. I normally try and hold them back, but I've actually been holding her back a month already. Um, and her beak's getting darker and she's actually started dropping eggs down at the bottom of the cage. So I don't want her to lose condition because they're wanting to breed and I'm not giving them the opportunity to. Um, so I'm going to make an exception in terms of that. In terms of the December to-do list or checklist, whatever you want to call it, there's quite a bit to discuss. So the first thing is, is that with it being the sort of um, first month of preparation for the breeding season, and I know that sounds funny because the Northern Hemisphere is currently breeding, so in theory it's our off season, but there's a lot to be done ahead of the breeding season for the birds. And the first thing that I do for my bird room is, as you can see on the list, is all the birds go on to an austerity diet. The purpose of austerity is to reduce the sort of minerals and vitamins type thing, opposed to actually, you're not trying to starve the birds. So I, I want them to trim down weight-wise. Yes, we don't want obesity issues coming into the breeding season. But at the same time, we're trying to drop the nutritional value so that the hormones, um, the breeding hormones kind of subside and the birds are in a kind of a, a rest state in terms of not wanting to breed. And as a result, when you now start feeding up and conditioning in January, your cocks and your hens are then synchronized. And that's the aim of the austerity period is twofold. So one is to reduce any fat on the bird, so uh, from an obesity perspective, and then two, to now drop them out of breeding condition so that when you bring them back into breeding con uh, condition in um, January, they're synchronized. So my thought process at the moment is probably to do austerity for three weeks instead of the full month, um, which means basically I'm going to be ready to, to sort of start condition feeding around about the 21st of December roughly. The birds have already been on this since the 1st of December. Um, so that, that's point number one on our, our checklist or to-do list. Point number two on the, the to-do list is that we start the preventative treatments ahead of the breeding season. I don't want um, pesticides, when I say pesticides I'm talking um, anti like mite medicine and, and deworming medicine and stuff like that to be in the bird system when they're producing eggs. So for me, I do my preventative treatment now in December, I do mite, so that's the next thing on our to-do list. I then once the demiting is taken place, remember you, you give the first treatment for mite, then you wait two weeks, depending on the medicine, obviously, but with ivermectin, um, that's how we do it. And then two weeks later, you give a second dose, and that makes sure that the new uh, mite eggs that have hatched are also killing off. So that two-prong treatment is very important, and that we're now doing in December. So the birds have already had their first treatment, the second mic treatment will happen around about the 14th of December um, when we'll do the second batch. Uh, uh, they're on the first, so the 14th. And then once that's done, 
The next step is, is that I'm wanting to deworm the birds. So I will do that right towards the end of December. I want to give them a week or two's break after the, the Ivermectin um, or Ivermec. And then once we've done the deworming on the birds, we then will be into effectively January. And the last thing that I'll do while we condition the birds in the month of January, I will then um, baycox the birds as well. And the reason we baycox is for coccidia. So we want to um, sort of basically cleanse the birds as much as possible of any kind of parasites in the gut um, or on the bird themselves. And that is critically important if you want a successful breeding season. Uh, is you need to synchronize your birds which is austerity and we need to make sure that they're not carrying a parasite load um, so yeah so that's kind of the most important thing is that we need to do well in advance of the breeding season just to clarify for anyone new to the channel the sort of southern hemisphere breeding season most of us start uh, pairing the birds towards the end of january um, or after the February shows. The big shows typically are in February in, in the Southern Hemisphere. So a lot of the breeders that are on the show bench, they actually wait until just after the show. Um, guys that aren't on the show bench will typically start pairing the end of January type scenario um, so that they've already got chicks by the end of Feb. My particular case, I haven't been able to participate in any shows for a while because I've been doing my judges test. So now that I've, I've done my qualification on that side of it, I'm now able to actually show. So I am going to be partaking in the February show. However, my birds, what I did this year, remember we decided that we don't want to pair up any first years because of the bad statistics that we had in terms of breeding success. We said that we were going to only breed second and third year birds essentially. And as a result, all the youngsters from last season are, are then available for the shows. So they my show team, if other, in other words. Obviously not all of them are show condition or, or show quality birds, should we say. So, But I've earmarked a couple that I thought are, are fairly decent and I will be entering those birds as my show team. As a result, Basically, the rest of the birds in the bird room are available to pair up for the end of January. So, this episode, like I said to you, we're going to be looking at the blue pairings, and then we're going to start looking at the majestic bloodline pairings. Um, and as we get closer to the end of January, we're going to be picking up the pace quite heavily on that front, so that I can try and get all the birds sort of introduced to you by the end of January. Um, so every week or every episode, should I say, we will be introducing at least one pair or more. Right, so pairing number one for the Blue Project. You will remember our pastel blue male from last season. Remember, pastel blue is a blue bird that has a single copy of yellow. Um, and hence, you can see that dialy chick of his um, that's because of the, the yellow that's come through. As it happens, the hen that's closest to us now is the red ring um, and that cock were both split for white breast, as you can see by the fact that there's a white cock that's coloring up. Um, a juvenile of theirs and then they also gave us a normal um, purple breasted black headed hen as well remember all their chicks will be 100% split for blue there is one other sibling that's not in this cage and that was one that we had fostered under a different pair um, and that turned out to be a purple breasted greenback uh, blackhead and he's actually quite a nice bird um, so he's potentially earmarked for the show team um, as long with that white breast i may use him as well um, but either way they none of those chicks will obviously be breeding this season with them being first years um, but they may or may not form part of the show team um, i will keep at least two of these birds for potential breeding the following year um, possibly three uh, depending on on what i feel we may need um, just as backups as they're not bad um, and we can use them with some of our other blue pairings right let's move on to our second pair 
Right, so our, first, our second sort of pairing on the blues is um, Louis from last year's Majestic Bloodline. You'll know that he turned out to be a split for Bluebird. Um, so I split him and his hen um, and I've paired him with a blue hen. So they're not looking perfect at the moment. There's still the odd feather that's kind of coming in from the malt. Um, but that's basically the second pairing for the blue project, which is our um, blue hen to a split for blue cock. Right, so our third pair for the blue project is a silver cock with a white breasted black headed hen. She is split for blue, um, and with her being white breast and him being white breast, that's the reason for this particular pairing. Um, he's not a bad bird, he's not 100% what I'd like to see, there's a couple of things that could be better. Um, the hen's probably slightly better than him in terms of head shape, um, but both of them aren't bad and yeah, we're hoping to obviously produce um, some either some pastels like him, um, some silver hens perhaps, and white breasted uh, pairings. You'll notice if you look very closely, there's a difference in color between his breast and his belly area. Um, and that could be a sign that he may be carrying the lilac gene because that, that white in his chest seems to have a very slight pink hue to it. Um, I'm not 100% convinced though because it's extremely slight. So we'll see what, what happens with his, his offspring. But yeah, so that's pairing number three for the blues. Right, so pairing number four for the blue project, we have this particular blue cock. That's another one of the birds donated by Gerard, um to the channel. And then we've put him up with Charlotte. Uh, so you'll remember in the Majestic Bloodline we had that pair, and I may have discussed it already with uh, Louis. Um, that turned out to be split blue, so we've paired her up with a blue cock bird this year with the hopes of getting some blue youngsters. So that's pairing number four for the blue project. Um, he's not a bad blue, he could be a little bit more robust, a little bit more round on the top of their head, but he's not bad at all. Um, and she's quite a nice bird, so I'm hoping that uh, yeah, the two of them give us some really nice birds that we could perhaps put on the show bench um, the end of next year. Right, so this particular pair, you can see the hen's beak is incredibly dark. Um, they were the first ones to go through the malt and I was sort of treating them like everyone else but then the hen went sort of into full condition. I then tried to get them into, a, well to drop out of condition by putting them on austerity for about two three weeks prior to the others. Um, so they've already had uh, three weeks worth of austerity um, but as you can see the hen is in full breeding condition. So. I've decided to put them back on full seed and I will make an exception and basically open up the nest box for them and let them start breeding. Um, I will give them two weeks of conditioning food just to make sure that they're in prime condition both hen and cock. But yeah, they're essentially the exception to the rule this season if you like. In terms of the quality, um, I'm a little bit light in terms of quality on the black-headed purple breasts. Uh, they were smaller than the orange-headed uh, family and the red-headed family. Um, the shapes aren't 100%. I've got incredibly nice hens. This is an average hen. It's, it's not the best of the three hens. Um, but I've got two very, very nice hens that I will be using this season. Um, but out of the cock birds, I'm going to basically having I'm going to have to buy in two individuals um, that's of reasonable quality. This guy is not bad, but he's not sort of wow if you like. A um, couple of problems with him. One is he's a little bit small. It's got nice strong colouring as you can see. Okay, there's a bit of shadow because the, the lighting I still need to sort out in here. Um, this is the one cage I haven't sorted the lighting properly, um, and that's why you're seeing the shadows and that. But other than that, he's also, from a show bird perspective, he's got a bit of a, uh, a 
sort of a cocktail um, so that would be a no-no and also he leans forward a little bit too much on the perch so yeah that's basically the majestic pairing